Mais tu fais quoi? I can't go on, says Anne, the octogenarian music teacher at the heart of Amour, who suffers a debilitating series of strokes inside her book-lined Paris apartment. Michael Haneke's unblinking, exacting drama rages gloriously against the dying of the light and is beautifully played by both Emmanuel Riva and Jean-Louis Trintignant. Good, uh, arrête ce jeu. C'est pas drôle. Mais quel jeu, bon Dieu? Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Andrew, I was saying that there's there's no happy ending, but of course the film itself had a happy ending in that it, it won the Palme d'Or at Cannes. Oh, little link there. <laughs> um, uh, a deserved winner? I do think it's better than Rust and Bone, which, which I thought might have won it um, um, at the time. Um, I, th I think the thing to say about Amour is, is that it is a sort of a fantastically meticulous and, and sort of anti-climactic study of this, this sort of um, process. It's just very, very remorseless. It's, it, it sort of doesn't really um, use any... Ch I, I, I was sort of thinking afterwards about you know, had this been an American film, even, even an indie film, you know, there would have been lots of sort of little heartwarming, redemptive sort of tricks and moments to sort of try and get the audience through this. And, and you know, Hanukkah just doesn't do anything like that. It's just completely dispassionate, al almost documentary um, in its sort of, in its treatment of all this. One of the most brilliant reviews uh, I read of this film <laughs> was on Twitter, Brett Easton Ellis, <laughs> when he came out of it, somewhat stunned, tweeted that it was like On Golden Pond, directed by Hitler. <laughs> and that's sort of true in a horrible way, much though I admire the film. Um, I think it, it is an incomparably serious film. The minute it starts, you realize you're in the presence of something kind of old school. Old, it, it, I found it like Bergman scenes from a marriage. It's, mm. like, it's like that. It has a, 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 an almost unfashionable kind of seriousness yeah. and high European uh, sense of cultural importance that is quite alien to other types of cinema and possibly slightly alien to Hanukkah's earlier work. What is interesting now is the question of, has Hanukkah slightly softened now? Is this a kind of more recognisably and accessibly human film? Mm. And it sort of is and it sort of isn't. Andrew, Hanukkah himself says that he doesn't see this as a political film at all. What, what's your take on it? I sort of love The White Ribbon, his last film, which, which was much more consciously political um, and a comment on, you know, sort of social forces at work in the First World War in Germany. And, and to me, that had the absolute perfect mix of um, this sort of cinema of torture, um, yet not so enclosing on itself that a lot of Hanukkah's earlier films have been. Um, and so I, for me, that was a real high point of, of what, he, what he could be doing. And this, I think, to me, steps back a little bit from that. Um, it, do, it doesn't seem to have a sort of massive political dimension or social dimension, not that a film has to, but, um, it, but because it's so barricaded, a little airless for me. Um, is that true? You, I mean, we're describing it as remorseless and unflinching, and yes. the fact that it's, it's something kind of forbidden to, yeah. be, to be kind of approached with, with great caution, which yes. makes it sound like an incredibly hard sell. I think some people are going to be going to this, thinking that it's a very, very upbeat story about the power of love to a lovely old couple who are uh, in, under, under death's shadow. And I think people might be, uh, find themselves thinking, this isn't what I was sold. And I wonder if people are going to think that. One of your films of the year? <laughs> oh. Goodness, yes, yes. I mean, it's 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 a it's a very remarkable film. It really is.